Welcome back to my presentation. We will now turn our attention to a second important data type in ecology. These are qualitatively marked patterns. In this case we have a univariate pattern, but our data contain additional information on each point. This information is in general called mark. Here we have a real specific type of mark, a binary or qualitative mark. The analysis of qualitatively marked point patterns assumes that the pattern was created in two different steps. In a first step, a first process creates the univariate pattern, for example shrubs in a shrubland. A second process creates the binary mark, for example surviving a fire or being burned. A qualitatively marked pattern could represent for for example, surviving versus dead trees, burnt versus non-burnt shrubs, occupied nests versus non-occupied nests, animal droppings with seeds versus animal droppings without seeds, as we will use later on in our example. In this type of analysis, one is not interested in the spatial structure of the univariate pattern, but in the spatial structure of the marks conditionally on the univariate pattern. That means we are only interested in the properties of the second process. Therefore, typical questions asked in this type of analysis are Is the pattern of dead trees a random subsample of all trees? Or are the dead trees aggregated within all trees? So, for example, if the dead trees are aggregated, we may get information on typical scales of composition by crowding. Therefore, again, we can ask for the typical spatial scales where dead trees are aggregated. Yeah, in the last overhead I explained the data structure and the typical questions for qualitatively marked point patterns. Now our task is to develop suitable summary functions and null models for this data structure. Summary functions that are adapted to the conditional nature of this data type are called mark connection functions. What is the idea of mark connection functions? Well, here we do not look at the typical points as for the summary functions before, but we look at point pairs that are separated by a given distance. The mark connection function are then the probability that the first point is of the first type and the second point is of the second type. Where both types can have a value of 1 or of 2 as the, defined by the binary marks. What would be a suitable null model that randomizes this data structure? Because we are not interested in the spatial structure of the univariate pattern, we keep this pattern unchanged. But because we are interested in the second process that distributes the marks over the points, we randomize this second process. We therefore use a null model called random labeling that randomly shuffles the marks, for example, dead versus alive, over the points. Under random labeling, we have spatial independence of the values of the marks. So the probability that one point has the mark D for that is simply the proportion of dead trees. The mark connection function of the null model is then the probability that both trees are dead, which is simply the product PD times PD. <coughs> we have now a situation where dead trees cluster together if the mark connection function is larger than PD times PD. However, we may also have a positive association of dead and surviving trees. So that means a dead tree is always close to a surviving tree. The expectation of random labeling for this situation is PD times PS 
where Ps is the proportion of surviving trees. We have therefore a positive association of dead and surviving trees if the mark connection function is larger than Pd times Ps. Yeah, now we have all the theoretical knowledge to analyze the data of Jose. We have the univariate pattern of the tropics of the animals and the mark is tropics containing seeds versus tropics that do not contain seeds. In the next step I will present you how to analyze this data set by using the Programmita software. Thank you for your attention. I hope to see you again in the next video where we are going to talk about quantitatively marked patterns.